Hey, Stephen, I'm doing yoga this morning. 6.30 in the morning. 6.30 in the morning yoga, wearing my purple pants. You can see everything. And I mean everything. Stephen, do you like what I'm wearing today? Uh, well, I only see your shirt right now, and it's the same shirt you wear every day, so nothing is different. <laughs> Oh my god, Jared is showing me his junk and his tight purple yoga pants. I wore tight yoga yoga pants. You were like the purple people eater. Yeah, I wore my purple yoga pants this morning to go to yoga here in Condo in Santa Barbara, California. What's that little bean I just saw? Um, <laughs> That's a jelly bean, <laughs> Stephen. That's... <laughs> I had to put a jelly bean in my pants to make it look bigger. <laughs> little Tic Tac. <laughs> yeah, Tic Tac. Um, I used to like the orange ones. They were very candy-like. Yeah, but it was the worst when you had them in your pocket because you can hear, you know, you walking from a mile jiggle. away. Yeah. Jiggle, jiggle, everything. Uh, my money don't jiggle, jiggle. It folds. That disappeared real quick. Mm -hmm. Not real quick. That was actually pretty big for a minute, and then it disappeared. Anyway, let me let me jump into this. We're uh, this is Raw Talk one sixteen. I am in Santa Barbara at a thing called Sony Condo. Uh, Sony Condo is a trip that they do every year, and I have not been here for at least five years because uh, I was on boycott from the Sony Condo trip um, for numerous reasons. But this trip is it used to be. And then we'll, we'll, we'll end up talking about the trip more at the end. We've got other stuff to talk about. But this trip used to be just photographers. Like it used to be we bring out our collective. We bring out our – remember they had like food trucks and everything at the one? Yeah. That one was good. So they used to bring just photographers. And now there's – I mean, just straight up influencers here. Well, and like we mentioned last week, if you really want to go back, it used to be strictly like press and that's it. Yeah. And then – there's that girl, Sarah Jane. I think her name's Sarah Jane. This sounds very porny, but it's not. She's she's a she's a singer who gets on. She's the one who sang that um, uh, uh, Ariel song with those two dudes in the kitchen and stood up on the counter and belted it out. Huh. I don't know if you remember that. It was like I huge don't. on the tickety talk and Instagram. And Instagram. And um, there's some other like dance influencers who I looked at that. I sent you a a, a a girl's Instagram last night. Did you see it? Yeah, but there was no context. So I had no idea what I was looking at. <laughs> I just assumed it was a girl dancing and, you know, what you usually send me. <laughs> well, I, I tend to see like a cute girl and I'm like, I got to go talk to her. <laughs> then I got to send that video to Steven. <laughs> <laughs> to Steve, I sent it to a few other people I know to see. To, um, then I looked at her Instagram and she's dating a race car driver. She lives in L.A. So way, way cooler than you. <laughs> there's no chance. No, but I was looking at at the Instagram. It's like 1.1 million on Instagram. Mm. But then you look at the likes and you're like, wait, how do you get only 2000 likes or how do you get 800 likes? And you got 1.1 million or you do a reel and you get 20,000. It's just like wh the numbers just don't number. So when you say influencers, are these not Sony shooters, like just people that primarily use their phone as a tool or? I will say, well, so there's like, so the, the one girl I was just talking about that I sent you a video of because she was very cute and <laughs> is dating a race car driver and not me. <laughs> Let me um, reiterate that. She's a dancer on Instagram and TikTok and is an audio ambassador for Sony. So like Sony headphones and oh. stuff like that. So there's, this is not the condo of your, it's not the same. It's, it's, it's interesting. There's so many influencers types. And then there's like me, um, Gerald Undone, Manny Ortiz isn't here. He was supposed to be here, but he hurt his back. Mm. Um, Matt Klaskowski's here. Uh, some well-known photographers. You've got David Burnett is here. I was on the flight in on my connecting flight with uh, Brian Smith is another old school sports shooter. We um, flew around the Grand Canyon with him. W with Brian? Mm-hmm. A73 press trip, I believe. Oh, really? I, I don't I don't really recall. Um, I will tell you that Neil Leifer did walk by me. <gasps> what did I he didn't say? stick around. I, I I, you know, he looks, he gets so curmudgeon -y when he sees me, <laughs> but I made sure not to like actually look at him for a long time because whatever I'm, I'm, I'm over whatever he is over, like not over, but whatever. Don't poke uh, I'm the gonna bear. Go to his, Do not poke I'm going to go to his, um, they're doing a, uh, 
a panel tomorrow and I will be uh, like legendary uh, fo- photographers and I'll be sitting front and center <laughs> staring at Neil in my yoga pants. The worst part is that even if he chose to try and ignore you in the crowd, you stick out like a sore thumb with your, you could be in the way back and still see your hair. <laughs> yeah. Purple yeah, shirt. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Uh, Whatever. Ho- ha- harbor that longer, Neil. So it seems like these people are invited now under the Sony umbrella in general, not just specific to cameras and photography and video, but headphones and whatever other devices that they sell. Yeah, the Sony car is here, by the way. Oh, oh. When did they? Yeah. Was that a year or two ago when they announced that? With Hyundai, yeah, yeah, Hyundai, yeah. Hyundai, with one of them. They say that it's going to come out in 2026 and they're going to take pre-orders in 2025. I mean, they could be the new Tesla. Yeah, I don't think it'll ever happen, to be honest with you. I think it's more of a platform to demonstrate their technology for sensors because it has like four, around 40 cameras, they said, in the car. I mean, remember what we said about them joining into the photography sphere? You know, we thought that would never really take off and look at them now. Well, if they do, I'm more than happy for them to drop me a car at my <laughs> house because I have a charger and a garage. So yeah. just move the Tesla further into the garage and then uh, use the other one. One step closer to owning a race car. Well, you know, it's funny. I looked at a Porsche. Uh, my buddy, uh, he collects, well, he has Porsches. He lives somewhere else, but he's got some money. He's like, he's like, now that I'm in, he's like, we could build you a custom Porsche and it maintains its value. And I'm like, dude, I'm not dropping $200,000 on a Porsche. I'm dropping $200,000 on building two bowling alleys in my house when I have a house that can do it, but I'm not dropping 200,000 on a fucking car. Jeez. It's not happening. My parents, uh, one of their neighbors has a dedicated uh, detached garage for all of his Porsches. And he has one of the systems that like, you know, lift your car and move it over and all that, whatever that's called. He's got five Porsches in there. I mean, he's got easily a mill worth of cars. It's insane. Easily a mill. Some of those things are over $250,000. Sure. Yeah, it could be even more. Yeah. Anyway, we'll come back to the condo event because there, there's a lot to go over, like the swag bag, a new lens that was announced here, me going to yoga this morning, my food review, <laughs> all of that stuff. All the important things. The food stuff, not so good. Food last night, not good. Buffet food style. When you got 500 people here to feed, there should be like, it should be like the military where I'm like one of the four-star generals (laughs) that should be getting the four-star general dinner, not the infantry dinner. Well, you texted me. What did you say last night about the food? Uh, Worst chicken ever. (laughs) Just random text. Oh, that That was lunch. That was lunch. That was not good chicken. And then you said, it's like camp. I'm sitting by myself, feeling it out. And then I sent Steven Glansberg from Superbad GIF, <laughs> him sitting by himself eating yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> I was sitting by myself, but then, you know, I, I sat with Gerald Undone for a while. Yeah. I talked to a bunch of other people. I mean, more people know me than I know them just because of me doing this for so long. And a lot of people have been inspired by what I've done. So that's always nice. Sure. Um, and good, but let's let's jump into me going to the U.S. Open the other day on yes. Monday. I went to the U.S. Open with my dad, my brother, uh, and two friends. And I I leave from Philly. They meet me in Trenton uh, on Amtrak, and I'm, I'm I get to the train station and I stand in line where you're supposed to stand in line for track nine. Mm-hmm. We were on track nine to be specific, and. I see this guy waddle over, you know, he's like round, he's got suspenders on, he's a actually pretty cool looking dude with his suspenders and his beard and all that stuff. And I, you know, he's like, he gets, skips the line and goes and sits in the, in the, um, in the pews that are sitting there, right? There's these old school, this is 1930s built, beautiful train station in Philly. And so he sits down and I'm like, oh, cool. He's going to sit there and maybe he's just taking a, taking a load off. Cause he like went to like the fifth person in line and sat there. Well, so when the time comes for the line to move, what does this guy do? Steven stands up and interjects himself into the line where he was sitting. <laughs> and then he waddles down the stairs. Like he, he could move. This guy could move for a larger dude. And he just goes down the stairs as if nothing happened. I turned to the lady behind me and I said, it's like Larry David skit. I'm on to him. I saw what he was doing. The Larry <laughs> David skit was so funny, the one that I sent you where they're standing in line at, at like a wedding and this woman comes up and introduces herself to this one guy. She's like, hey, it's you. I, 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 it's been a long time. And so she gets into a conversation just for the sole purpose of cutting, cutting in line, line. <laughs> to get to the food quicker. And Larry's like, I see what you, and he stops. He's like, excuse me, ma'am. He's like, 
I'm on to you. I see what you did. And he goes like, Brian, do you know this woman? He's like, well, I think uh, yeah, eight years ago. No, actually, no, I don't. <laughs> and he, and, and Larry's like, see, see you cut in line. And she's like, she's like, and what's it to you? He's like, you line cut it. He's like, I respect the game, but I saw what you did. Now you got to get out. So what does she do? She goes behind Larry to get in the line now that she's talking to him. And Larry's like, no, 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 no. Good try again. All the way to the back of the line. <laughs> I cannot stand when people cut lines or, or with traffic merges or something and they go all the way to the front, try to merge in front. It's like, come on. Yeah. Not the people that go in the shoulder to go around you. That's what I'm talking about. hundred percent the zipper method. See, but most people don't understand the zipper method. They'll get in this long line on the left side because they're like, well, a merge is coming in a thousand feet. Yeah. Merge in a thousand fucking feet. Don't merge at a thousand feet. Go in the right lane until the lane ends and then you merge over. So what else happened at the U.S. Open? Well, so I get to the U.S. Open. I don't bring a camera because I don't get a pass. And I, I don't know if I said this last year, but I was in good discussions to get a credential to photograph. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to the right people and we were amenable. We had a bunch of calls, which is honestly way too many calls because there's no reason you shouldn't just approve me for a damn pass. But it got to the point where I'm like, OK, am I approved? I'm like, look, I'm not looking to come to the finals. I'm not looking to photograph at the end. I just want to come early and I want to make a video about the process of being a photographer at the U.S. Open, going into the gear room with Canon or Sony or Nikon. Actually, I don't even think Nikon. Well, Nikon might be there now. Um, and then going under the court to photograph behind the players on the on Arthur Ashe, like showing people all of these things that you don't get to see, just like I did at the World Series. Well, when push came to shove, they're like, we've decided that you're not traditional media, so we can't give you a pass. And I basically told them to go fuck themselves. I'm like, here's the World Series series that I did. I did the fucking World Series. Yeah. And that is the finals of the tennis, basically. And all I was asking for was to come down here for one day in the first two weeks, which is when there's not a final going on and plenty of... Dude, I see people walking around here with like a Z6 shooting. Can anyone bring any camera, any lens? Yes. Okay. Yes. So a woman was standing in line and she had a R6 Mark II and a 100 to 500 with her. Hmm. Now you can't bring a bag, but okay. you can bring any lens. Doesn't matter if it's professional or not. So theoretically, I could walk up there with an R3 and a 100 to 300 as long as I didn't have a bag and I just carried it all day and I could do it. But I walked in there and I was like, wait a second, Canon has an R1 now. So I texted our guy at Canon to say, hey, are you at the US Open? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, can I get an R1 for a few hours? And he's like, let me check. And then he came out and handed me an R1 and I got an 85-1-2 and spent the next couple hours just walking around taking pictures and I felt good, you know, hmm. like I was getting, you know, the R1 in my hands. Still pre-production firmware and everything though. Still pre-production. That's why when I posted the pictures, I had to say pre-production capture with a pre-production camera. It still works like a real camera. I think it's it's perfectly fine. And you shot full electronic shutter, I assume, like your R3? Yeah, I shot full electronic shutter. 40 frames? Just like the R3. 20, what? 40 frames a second. Mm -hmm. 20 frames a second pre-shooting, using the 85.12 at 1.2, shooting at like one ten thousandth or one twelve twelve thousand eight hundredth of a second at 1.2 at 100 ISO. So yeah, using it the way that I would personally use it. But the pre-shooting certainly changes your ability to capture the moment. I, I'm i in love with pre-shooting. Of course, I'm not in love with the fact that it's 20 pictures every time. If I could cut if I could cut it in more than half and not do like a half a second, you know, it's a half a second automatically every time. Uh, if I could do, you know, I, I would take a 10th of a second. If I could do like eight extra frames right before, honestly, but honestly, Stephen, if even it was 15 or 20 extra frames, like it is 20 frames. It's like, so what? Like if you get the best, if you if it helps you get the shot, you get the shot. You just end up with a lot of extra stuff. I was going to say, I actually downloaded those photos for you to then upload the Dropbox so you can download them when you get to condo uh, because you were traveling. There was 4,000 photos I think you took. And I don't know, you know, if that was a span of six hours, two hours, one hour, like but it was a lot hours. of photos. Yeah, you end up with a lot because so that's you're getting the only 20, 20 extra frames every time. So if you end up taking 15 pictures on in a burst, you're now at 35 pictures for that burst. 
that's got to just be a simple firmware update down the road. It's just basic software that you can just tweak like Sony has it. I think they have it perfectly set where you can pick anywhere from 10th of a second increment all the way to one full second. It's and everything one tenth in of a tenth of a second. Okay, so one one hundredth of a second. Yeah, so because because don't forget, if you're shooting 120 frames a second, you may not want 70 or 60 frames at a at you know. So it it changes. That's why they do it on uh, based off of tenths of tenths of a second, which is great that you you can dial it in. And that's and that's the discussion we've continually had when anybody talks. Like I read what these Canon guys here. I actually have a message from a guy. I don't want to pick up my phone actually because I don't want to mess up my headset. Oh, so yeah. I'm not going to pick up my phone, guys. I'm using um, a, a mobile setup and, and anyway, I don't want to screw it up. But one of the um, Canon guys who who's an ambassador has an R1 and like they share their thoughts and they always are like this is this is amazing like this is great it's an awesome camera and I'm like they're like I love this feature and I'm like that and they're like what do you think I'm like yeah no it's a great camera but you haven't used an A93 so you don't see the global shutter and yes it's 250 ISO base but you can shoot at 180,000th of a second with a 1.2 lens. They don't know what they're missing. I mean, all they know is their brand, the Canon brand, the R3 as their flagship. They have never picked up an A93 with a global shutter. I mean, just recently I was bringing up uh, about the launch event for the A93 and how that one girl was trolling the spear around on stage. And just from the EVF recording, I could literally freeze the recording freeze frame. And every time I froze that frame, it was a yeah. perfectly straight line because of that global shutter. And that wouldn't happen with the R1. Correct. I mean, but I'm sure you again, would get it straight enough, but it's yeah, still not it, going it's to not be a an huge exact deal. Yeah. Like this isn't shitting on it just to shit on it. It's just pointing out the facts are the facts. But anybody that is a sports shooter that uses an R1 or uses an R3 is going to want to use an R1, though mm -hmm. it is bigger in the hands. I don't like the feel anymore. I don't know if they will correct that in a future. I don't know if they're going to get rid of the R3. I don't know if they're going to use an R3 body for something else. I can't see them coming out with an R3 Mark II because, one, this is the R3 Mark II. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's just... I wish it was the same body. And and when I asked, they're like, well, you know, to fit the tech inside, what tech? Like, what extra tech did you need to fit inside to give us 40 frames a second instead of uh, 30 frames a second? And it's not like there's other tech inside of this. I mean, yeah, you have I mean, a massive have viewfinder. The new Digic Accelerator. I don't know if that takes up more room on the board. Who knows? I don't know, dude. It can't take up that much that they had to make it wider. The reason they made it wider is they're like, this is what an, a flagship looks like. The big reason that I heard was they wanted to make sure that they could uh, fit gloves. If someone's wearing thick gloves or something like that, they can easily still put their hand around the grip and not be like hitting the lens or something like that. That's a stupid but answer. I think when you don't have gloves on, it makes it that much more uncomfortable. And I think most people are not wearing gloves versus wearing gloves. 99% of the people are not using gloves. Yeah. It's just a stupid, stupid statement. They always try to say something and you can poke a hole in I everything. Know. I know. Like that. And that's Instead every like brand. A, that's every brand does that. They try and justify it. Well, the best feeling camera now on the market is the A93 with the grip is the best feeling camera. Now, not in terms of build quality, because I prefer the R3 feet like, all one unit, right? That stuff was great. But look, I enjoyed shooting it. I think the viewfinder is the best viewfinder I've seen on the market in terms of uh, size. It's massive and it's beautiful. Um, the speed of shooting is obviously great. Not as good as, a, you know, if I went more with the A93, but image quality looks perfectly fine to me. The autofocus is what's incredible. So speaking of autofocus, it now has the cross-type AF points. Do you notice a, a radical change in autofocus? Is it basically the same, on par? How is it? I mean, I'm shooting tennis, so it's... It, tennis is just... It found the person where I needed to find the person. No problem at all with that. Vertical, horizontal, perfectly fine. I didn't notice it being like, oh, this is noticeably better. I just know that it... The R3 was already amazing. I, I enjoyed shooting it, and yes, it, it's going to be a dance to figure out how much... When do I have pre-shooting on? But then you get that FOMO for that one time where pre-shooting is going to come in handy and you don't have it on. Exactly. But I'm shooting different, though. I'm noticing that I have a different style of shooting with the R5 Mark II and the R1 because I'm 
cognizant of how many pre-shoots shots I'm taking. Like if I just want to get a picture of somebody, I maybe don't hold the button down for a whole second to buffer or for a whole half second to buffer 20 shots when I want to just get a picture. Now, what we what we need is one button to turn it off. Instead, I have to make multiple moves. Steven discovered I can put it on one of the star buttons, back thumb, I click it, it goes right to my menu where I hit a hit okay. And it's it's quick, but it's not as quick as if I just hit one button. I have to make three moves to get it turned off. Well, I know other people suggested uh, other settings as well. Like you can uh, edit your cue menu and add pre-shooting to that, although that still takes two it buttons. Takes longer. For the I most have to take part. my eye off. Also, I think someone said something about like you can do a C1 or C2 custom setting and have pre-shooting they always did, on but you on have the to one hit a button. You Correct. have to hit a button on top and then rotate. It's another slowdown. Yeah, personally, I found going to my menu directly and hitting it on real quick. I think that's the fastest method, but yeah. I, it's still not as fast as literally hitting the button once and done. No, no. Once and done, so Sony lets you do that with the A, A93. Exactly. Like you can deactivate with any button. You can set it to say, turn off 120 frames a second or the boost mode. You can do that. And then and then you have a button for pre-shooting too. Then the fact that you can literally hit that speed boost mid-shooting while you're shooting to ramp up, you know, just like uh, if you hit the NAS button when you're, uh, when you're in a car or yeah. something like that. Well, I didn't say, I don't know if I said this last week, but I noticed with pre-shooting, when you're buffering, you can't change the ISO shutter speed or or aperture. So while you're buffering, you cannot make a change, which is fine because you just lift your finger and make a change and then put your finger halfway down again. But it's something I noticed because sometimes when you're when you're on the batter or ba any subject and like maybe the light shifts a, a little bit, but you still want to have the buffer, I like to maybe just hit the ISO real quick or a shutter speed. You can't do that. You got to take your finger off the button halfway from halfway and then press it again after you make the change. What I'll say is using the 85 is obviously not the right lens for shooting tennis, but when you do get a shot, because I could get up close, you know, pretty close in the outside courts, as you saw on Instagram, obviously when you get them in the frame right, it's beautiful. But that's where I, I think a 200 F2 or a 200 1.8 RF, oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> would be amazing. What about a 135 1.8? I already have it. Oh, I'm just saying, do, do you think that would be better than a 200 or better than an 85? Is that too short mm, for tennis I mean, specifically? Eh, you got the 70 to 200, 28, so there's not as much of a difference. It's fine. It would work perfectly well for tennis. I think the primes are great. I think that would be a great tennis lens. I didn't even think about the 135, but a 200 for 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 portraits, a 200 for uh, for sports would be really sweet if they do come out with it. I wonder if they will. It's such a niche specific lens, you know, and they, they already have the 135, 18. Is it really needed? And it'll also be like a $5,000 lens, I'm sure. Back in the day, they had the 200. They had the 200, 18. They had a 200 F2, which I have used the 200 F2 adapted to uh, the, the modern camera, to an R3, and I did not like it. You lose out on, on your shooting speed. The focus isn't as fast as a 70 to 200, and you're not gaining that much from F2 to 2.8 that the trade-off is worth it. And it just, the modern RF glass is just so beautiful. Keep in mind that F2, I think it came out in like 2008. So it is a very old lens at this point. That's that's getting up there. So, all right, let's, let's uh, shift gears. Let's transition over here to Sony Condo. Ba -ba -da -ba -da, Sony Condo, where everybody's like, Sony, yay! Ah, <laughs> everybody cheer for Sony! <laughs> yippee ki yay! Oh, thanks, Sony, for bringing me on a free trip! Uh, that's 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 a lot of the influencers. Because, I mean, it's great that they get to experience it, but they are 100% um, getting... They're not getting bought off in the terms of getting bought off. You know what I'm saying? But it does, like, when you're like, oh, we're staying at the Ritz-Carlton, yeah. a five-star hotel. They're, they're whining the and dining you. Star. They are. There's, there's of course, open bars and, and all of that stuff, which I do not indulge in. Everything is on Sony's tab. And, you know, it's like, hey, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hook you up this week. How about you hook us up next time you do a review? <laughs> yeah, they don't they don't say that just I to know, be clear. This isn't like Google who was like saying the thing out loud that they think, you know, where uh, if you say something negative, it's not that. Now, I chose not to bring a camera. I could take out any camera here. Like they put a they put an A93 aside for me that I can't take home, but they put one aside in case I wanted to shoot. I have zero desire to shoot anything. Sony does put together some of the best sets when it comes to photographing models. They do the best job with that of any of the companies. Sony always builds the best sets to get the best 
potential photos. I brought my four by five. I mm. brought it to photograph David Burnett, who brought his four by five. And I do plan on hopefully sitting down with David for a conversation. I already sat with him for like 20 some minutes just when we got here. Awesome stuff. Just sitting and having a just shooting the shit conversation about Paris, about uh, uh, his run ins with uh, getting access to Trump back in the day, you know, because we were talking about me getting denied access. And mm -hmm. and he was talking about what he had to jump through hoops and still not get access to certain things, even though he is a official. He's a White House photographer and a Senate. He's got his passes. Wow. It was but he's tell some great stories. I, I, and so I'm going to sit down with him maybe with the, the I brought the Hollyland things, which are going to be okay enough. They're not going to be as good as using a real microphone like what we use here, but just for us having a conversation and shooting the shit, good enough is good enough because it's about the content. You think it's going to be a bonus Raw Talk episode or something like that? Um, we might throw it in somewhere. I, yeah, it could be a bonus. It, it's worth it because it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to sit down with Neil Leifer. It's going to sound like this. <laughs> hey, Neil. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Just silence. He's gone. He's not even there. No, He's not you're going to hear him chair. walking away. <laughs> He's going to be like, eh. you're going you're gonna to see steam popping out of his ears and he's going to oh, turn geez. beet red. And it's going to be like, no. Well, you still got another two days there. So maybe you'll run into him and uh, make amends. No, dude. He looked at me as if uh, as death walked in the door. He <laughs> ran for me like I was the Grim Reaper. <laughs> and, and by run, I mean he walked away. So anyway, the, 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 the trip out here is there. While I'm recording this, they're about to have an announcement of their 85 1.4, which we've had for a couple of months at yes. this point to test out. And I took it uh, along with the 35 1.4 from, from Canon to that Civil War reenactment. And I will say, I was so happy with the photos with the 85. I mean... So it was so cinematic looking, especially when I edited it with, with copper tone, um, Man, I was super stoked and super happy. Soak, Steve. We're talking about the fightings. We're talking about the fightings. Anyway, stoked. Um, it was a video when the Phillies are winning. Whatever, <laughs> Steven. Um, uh, I'm so happy with with those photos. Now, do I would I prefer the lens to be a one two? Yeah, a hundred percent. The fact that Canon has it and Nikon has it and Sony doesn't have it, and I know it's more well, of a niche lens. They say with with that mount that you can't get a one two with anything past fifty millimeters, and we've kind of seen that so far. Well, they said that about. I didn't think they were going to have a fifty because I thought they said you couldn't do a one two at all. Well, they said up to fifty millimeters apparently. Oh. Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently, my mom, my grandma said, oh, I love the apparently kid. He's probably in college now. <laughs> now, the 1.4. Apparently, excuse me, Stephen, excuse me, the, the, the apparently kid. Can you Google? Because I don't want to change my settings. Google apparently kid. How old is the apparently kid uh, from Ellen DeGeneres? Because he's probably in college like this. He's like, apparently, I'm going to need you to come back to my room later and uh, have a good time. It says he's only he's 15. Oh shit! I take I take it back. I take it back. I'll save that for three years. Make a note, Stephen. <laughs> three years. We're gonna talk about the apparently kid going to college. Apparent apparently he's not only fifteen. Really? Yeah. Well, he was only five when it happened, and that, that was, was ten, 10 years, years ago. ago. Wow. Yeah. Noah Ritter. Noah Ritter. That kid was funny as shit. <laughs> Super funny. That man, that was funny. Just three weeks ago, they uh, one of the news stations, I guess the local news stations, met up with him and made him redo the uh, interview, <laughs> and he did it did as a fifteen-year-old. Yeah. Oh, that's At the good. Wayne good? County Fair. I don't know. I haven't watched it. I'm just googling it right now. Oh, that's probably funny. That's probably super duper funny. Almost two million views, and it was uh, August fourth. <laughs> the apparently kid. Ten years later, it's what it's called. On YouTube. Oh, uh, make a note. Put that in the put that in the slacky slack for me to check out after the show. We actually just put that video live. Scheduled it uh, while I'm out here. They're actually doing the launch video launch event for it right now, mm. and I'm not in the room with all the influencers because they're all waiting to see what it is, and we already had it. I'm gonna go over there when we're done in my yoga pants, or if I change back into my regular pants. I'm not sure. This is the first condo event where they announced new gear in quite some time. Usually, usually they don't announce gear. We didn't. I didn't come here because they announced gear. Um, I came because it's been a minute since I've come to one. Like I said earlier, and I just wanted to put in some FaceTime with people. Sure. And you guys are. You know, we got a lot of work done last week, so there's plenty of stuff to be edited. Yep. Steven's not here. His uh, one year old's birthday's coming up, so 
it and it also made no sense to bring Steven out to this trip. It's a in my opinion a waste of 4 days for him. I agree. 100% waste of 4 days. Now, it's not a waste for me cuz I went at, at 6:30 a.m. and did some yoga on the on the grass this morning <laughs> and got a custom Sony yoga mat. Back to the Sony lens though. Uh it's now pretty much on par, if not better than the Sigma 8514 DGD. And that came out, what, four years ago uh, at this point? It's a hundred. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's better. Like just keep in mind, the Sigma still has the edge on certain things. It's slightly lighter. It's slightly smaller. It's less expensive by $700. It's sharp as hell. The thing with the sharpness on those Sigmas is misleading. Like I find that it's an overly sharp lens where it doesn't feel like it has as soft of the bokeh, in my opinion, like just a feel in the face. It's like an overly sharp sensation in my pants. <laughs> but $700 for majority of people, it's a fantastic buy. Of course. When you're a professional, you stick with the native as much as possible. Because keep in mind, Sony still has the edge with speed in terms of autofocus, super fast and quiet AF. They're, they're AF. You can't even audibly hear it. Video-wise, it's it's a great lens. You're also not getting the 120 frames per second. Uh, with the Sigma, you're only getting 15 frames per second when it comes to still shooting. You're not getting any of the focus breathing compensation or in-camera corrections. Uh, so yeah, obviously... The Sony, there's a reason it's called a G Master and it's a native lens and it's a version two. It's going to be the best option when it comes to 85 millimeter. But the Sigma is not far behind, even even today. No, Sigma's good. Yeah. The concerning thing here is when you find out that the lens, the Sony is 1799, mm -hmm. right, for the lens, and you go back to 2008 and the other lens was 1799, you're like, holy, how much ripoff were you doing back then, Sony? The fact that it's the same price now, how much profit was in it back then? 2008? Uh, sorry, 2016, eight years ago. Yeah, eight years ago, man. Sorry, my math is, when you, you know, Stephen, when you get older, you think like 2008, it was just, it was just a Yesterday. couple years ago. <laughs> uh, now I'm seeing girls here that are born in two. It's funny. I was in um, Philly. Uh, Saturday night or wherever it was. And I was sitting outside of the uh, cocktail bar. Like I like to do and talk to Gump. Gump is the, uh, he's the, he's the bar. He's the, 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 the bouncer guy. But these girls, I, I said, it's like nice to see that these, these uh, hip huggers are coming back, right? 1999. I'm like, yeah, those things are like 1999. They're great. Better than mom jeans. And she's like, I was born in 99. I was like, Cool. <laughs> I graduated in 99. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, now let me see your ass. <laughs> uh, I'm coming up on my 20th uh, high school reunion. Can I go to it with you? No, I'm just kidding. It hasn't been scheduled yet, but I'm sure they'll do something. My 25th. Wait, is it my 25th? Are you, how are you 20 years? In 2026, it'll be 20 years. We're only a few months away from 2025. <laughs> I graduated in 99. So my 25th, right, is... Yeah, my 25th is coming up uh, right before. I think it's the day before if it if they actually do it is the day before I go to Kenya again oh, this year. OK, I mean, I'm going to go. I love going and, and I don't think there's going to be a lot of people at this point because the last one only had like 99 or 100 people out of 900 that graduated. So I don't really think many people are going to go. There's not much of a need to go anymore when you're when everyone's so connected. Yeah. But I'm I'm wondering if uh, people still think I make porn, if that's going to be the big talk of the town again, like it was at my 20th reunion. Bobby Long. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and is it true? Is what true? That you make porn? Yes. And then the girl's like, like, like this type of stuff? I'm like, yeah, whatever you want. You name it. You name it. That's the porn I do. It's amazing. It's so cool. I was like, yeah, that's right. Like talking about me. That's awesome. Thank you for talking about me. I don't care how you're talking about me. It's you're talking about me. <laughs> and that's that. I, so what I should do is I should film it. I'd be like, hey, uh, do you remember me from high school? They're like, no, shit. Next person. Hey, you remember me from high school? No, you were a loser. Call me. You remember me from high school? Uh, yeah, I fucking hated you. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, you a loser now? Yeah, you're a loser now, right? Were you a mechanic? Not that there's anything wrong with being a mechanic. Not there's anything wrong with being a mechanic, but some of them are. Well, clearly, there is something wrong if you're bringing that up. 
Nah, man, you should be an elect. No, be like, actually, I'm an electric car mechanic and I'm making $2 million a year because I started the best business in the world where I farm out. We go to people's houses and fix their cars because that, that now that's a mechanic. Good mechanics probably switched into learning every day, everything they could about those electric cars and, and, and turn that into a big business. If they didn't, then they're losers. Jeez. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just digging a hole, Stephen. Kind of like here at the Sony event. Um, yeah. How, how's it been? I, who, who have you been hanging out with? Uh, I met some cool people I didn't know. Like they have YouTube channels. They were cool to talk to. I don't remember their names or anything because <laughs> I, I can't remember anybody's name. Um, Gerald Undone I sat with. I talked with Matt Klaskowski quite a bit yesterday. Okay. I talked to that dancing girl with 1.1 million subscribers who's dating a uh, race car driver race car driver, and not me. Way cooler. Um, and her friends. And I don't know how old they are. I'm probably older than most of them, but... So I did yoga this morning and it was fine. It was nothing special. I'm not a big fan of yoga, to be honest with you. Um, Is Ted Forbes there? No, nah, Ted Forbes didn't come. Hmm. He was invited, I think, but he didn't come. wonder why. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He probably has FOMO. I'm, I'm cool with being here. I didn't have a problem coming here this time. Um, you know, the Phillies are playing at home. Not a big deal. Uh, I just wanted to come out here and, and meet some people. But, Stephen, there's a swag bag. I, I'm told them they they have to mail it to me because I don't have room for this shit. That much stuff, huh? It's a, it's a whole backpack. It's this Wander backpack. It's a beautiful backpack. Mm. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. I, I also got a, um, a Sony yoga mat that I can take home. They're like, this is yours. I'm like, cool. How am I getting How am I going to get it home? <laughs> Like, imagine me putting, rolling that out at an airport. They're going to think that I'm praying to Allah or something. You know, if you go and like put it in the airport and just be like, yeah, I, mean, I got to pray five times a day. Not if you're wearing those yoga pants. Uh, yeah. You say, Allah, Allah, khabar, you know, and you say it while you're wearing these yoga pants. <laughs> or they'll just assume you're doing yoga. <laughs> Running through the terminal. Oh, I'm just doing yoga. Downward dog, everybody. <laughs> let me let me pull up the swag bag because I want to show you what's in it. Because I'm sure people want to know what's in Sony swags bags. I want to know. A Sony car. In, well, I asked if they could send you one because they should. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> what's in my bag? Sony swag bag edition. All right. So I walk in there. They're like, what size shirt are you? I'm like, I won't wear your shirt. Extra, extra small. No. Look at these, Steven. What are these? Oh, sandals. Sandals. They're, they're sandals with like, they're made by Reef. Ever heard of Reef sandals? Google them. How much are Reef sandals, Stephen? Uh, <laughs> reef size 10. These are called, they're called Cushion Comfort. Cushion, oh, Cushion Phantom 2.0. Cushion Phantom 2.0. Got to be like 40 bucks, right? That is a $50 flip-flop. It's a it's a thong flippity-flop. Which I don't like thong flip-flops. I, I don't know if I can wear them because I don't like think I like things between my cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> then there's this bag, Wander. It's the PRVKE21, 21 liter camera backpack. Ooh, it's in that alpha orange color too. It, it is. It's alpha. It says alpha on it. It's heavy as shit. Is that leather? I don't know if that's... Looks nice. <laughs> it smells like an inflatable. It smells like a swimmy is what it <laughs> smells like. <laughs> uh, Do you see how much that one is? Are you looking this one up? That looks like it's a $219 bag. Ooh, this is a gorgeous bag. Yeah. And it's custom. Really nice bag. Um, there's an umbrella. So there's an umbrella, which is, I don't know if it's a good one. Actually, who makes this? Um, no, this is definitely not a good umbrella. <laughs> Let's price check uh, everything. <laughs> the Revolu It's called The Revolution, Stephen. 43, 42, 43 inch arc. The Revolution umbrella. <laughs> I'm not looking that up. <laughs> Look it up, Stephen. I want to know. It's a freaking oh. umbrella. <laughs> Stephen, I think it says Sony on it. I'm sure everything well, is Sony branded. Remember we got the, uh, the coffee mug. That was also Sony branded. Yeah, well, now now I have an umbrella. All right. Oh, shit. I'm dropping stuff out of the bag. So make sure they ship me one, but not Dan. Definitely not Dan. I didn't even think about Dan. <laughs> he terrible. could use one That's of these terrible. backpacks. <laughs> I didn't even think about Dan. I Dan forgot about Dan. would be the Dan. one that would actually use that backpack on like a hiking uh, trail. I, 
I forgot about Dan. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, moving on. There's these <laughs> stress balls that are f- they. Ca- Sony has this thing called Create Action, kind of like think about fund a photographer. They have a bunch of different organizations that they fund, and they were donating like a half a million dollars to them, and then everyone at the event gets to donate five hundred a thousand dollars to uh, one of the 12 organizations. Wow. So they're giving everybody $1,000, but not actually giving us $1,000, you know, a tax write-off. But we don't get to actually um, give the 1000 We don't get the $1,000 to decide who we want to give it to. Mm. But there is an organization from Philly that I'll give it to Philly because because I want to give it to a Philly organization and then get involved and see what it's like. Um, there's cool. that. There's a zipper pouch, Stephen. Hold on. I think there's a towel in here. A towel. I'm opening it. Oh, yeah. It's a Sony towel. It says Sony on it. I'm telling you, everything's Sony branded. Guarantee it. Oh, it's very nice. Very nice. Going to zipper that back up. Then there's a hobo light. A hobo light? Yeah, I think it's called hobo. Iris. Uh, ho- hobo light. Yeah, it's a not a very good name. Um, <laughs> I thought you Adam were just Lerner. giving it a nickname. No, it's called the Hobo Light. Adam Lerner, our buddy Adam, actually works with them. Oh man, it's actually pretty cool in there. There's like a there's some cool stuff in the box of that. It's a really nice box too. That is a nice box. Don't have to look that up. Nice presentation. There's a weed pouch. <clears throat> I don't know if it's weed, but there's a looks like is a, this the one with the poker chip? A marble pouch. Oh yeah, it comes with two poker chips. Redeem for one cushion, one custom fragrance. Oh. Okay, I guess I can make my own fragrance. Patchouli. Redeem for one pair of sunglasses. I didn't do that. There's a sunglass company here. I guess I'll redeem that for later for Steven. There was this. Um, this is the Apple AirTag. Oh, no. This is a Condor Blue um, uh, Apple AirTag uh, multi-tool. Holder? No, I don't know what the KB... ED, uh, it's an every day. Uh, stupid. A, it's EDC. A David, David Manning edition EDC clip. It's called the EDC clip. Look it up on their site. It's actually pretty cool. It has screwdriver built in. It has a can opener. You can open a box with it, uh, flathead on it. So, and I got mine custom lasered with fro on it. That is a $69 clip. Wow. All right. $69. Cha-ching. Damn, man. Man, that is an Steven, expensive swag bag. I know. This is a probably like eight hundred, five, six hundred dollars worth of swag. Easily. All right. Let me and and I have no way of getting it home. But this is pretty cool. This is a Sony ULT powered sound. ULT field one. This has got to be a two hundred dollar speaker, Steven. Wow. That's really nice. Did, did they give you the the Sony headphones? I haven't come across headphones yet, but I hope so. What is it? The MX fives, the latest version. They are incredible. The over you're talking over the year. Yes. Over the year. Here, look this up. Did you look it up yet? Sony ULT. Yeah. The ULT field one. That is a $130 speaker that is on sale for a hundred dollars right now. Okay, cool. Cool. It's like a little nice Bluetooth speaker. There's an iJustine Condor blue, uh, package that comes with a bunch of condor blue stuff Hmm. that's i guess a nice package to carry around your cables i justine is here your favorite yeah and uh i think that's it steven they packed all that in that bag they pack all that in the bag and it and then they have a cube uh that can go in place of all this stuff. But you're right though. I don't know how they uh, expect people to bring some of that stuff home. That's, that's well, a lot. Well, they tell you, they're like, bring extra space in your bag. I'm like, yeah, no, not going to bring <laughs> extra space in my bag. <laughs> just don't, just don't have the ability to travel. Cause I brought my four by five Yeah, and I'm not checking. I mean, I could check it, but I don't want to check it. I want to get home and go right to dinner on Friday. That's like my plan. Very important. So, that's the swag. Uh, and now I have a yoga mat that says Sony on it. I should cross it out. <laughs> so how was the initial dinner gathering, whatever, the first night you arrived? Well, the dinner was not very good, Stephen. Minus um, the food itself. <laughs> the food was not very good. I did sit with uh, 
the girl from The Verge, Becca Versace, hmm. she said hi to me, and I was like, sup? <laughs> so how's the verge so no, she's like i saw i see your videos i'm like i've seen your videos on the verge she's like i just left the verge i'm like why did you leave the verge so she just put out a video on that today i didn't watch it but um we ended up talking and and literally like two minutes into the conversation she i was giving her advice she asked for it i wasn't unsolicited giving her advice yeah and she's just like uh this last two minutes has been extremely helpful for figuring out what i need to do and we talked for like another well, i sat with her at dinner um and we talked for like 30 40 minutes just about ideas that she could pursue and uh, I just wanted to know, like, why'd you leave? What are you looking to do? How much, what's your nut? Like, how much money do you need to make in order to sustain yourself? And she gave me a number and I'm like, yeah, I think that is possible. And I think you will probably double or triple that number if you, you know, she has a good ability because she already had the verge following. So she can take those people over to her own channel. And I think she had 25,000 followers after the, her last video with the verge. And now she'll put up this other one, but 25,000 is great. Like that is a good starting point, right? You, sure. you monetize right off the bat. The hard part is riding that wave. Yes. Creating that first or second video and keeping up with it and having uh, others in the queue ready to go. Yeah, what she said is that she made a video a week for The Verge, mm -hmm. so she's already in the workflow. She edits her own stuff, so nice. that's a big bonus. And I basically was like, I think if you could do, even if you did every other week a second video in a week, like a photo news fix style, like tech news, she's doing tech stuff, so that include cameras, that can include, include computers, because computer people have a ton of money to spend when it comes to those companies. And I was like, just my thing is not like, just copy me, which is me copying someone else, basically who copied someone else about just giving the news. And if you write that, she already works on a teleprompter. I'm like, this makes sense. Do three store, three news stories, or feel out what works best for you, because that way you can make a title that's going to draw people in for the now, which then get people to sign up and subscribe and follow that will watch long term. And so that's really important to do. And so we'll see how she does. How long has she been working with The Verge? I don't know. Hmm. A couple years, I think. Okay. I really don't know how, how long she was working with The Verge. Um, but this is the same thing that happens in the industry all the time is the faces, these personalities that get hired to work for these companies end up realizing that they are not getting paid the right amount of money for the work that they're doing and the, and the money that's being generated, which they don't know the money that's being generated because the companies don't share in that profit generally with them. Mm -hmm. The way like... Like I saw it with Donut Media, who I didn't even know Donut Media. I didn't know what that was. It, it's a car channel, I think. And the, a couple of people just left there to yeah. start their own channels. And they have a shoot, like they go off on their own. They have a shooter and they're the personality. So that's a good mix. And they don't need to make as much money as a full-on production company. They need to make enough to sustain both of them and then grow. And so I, I you know, this happens all the time and it's happened you know, uh, Jenna Marbles, she left Barstool back in the day. That's a super old one. Yeah. Um, but, but it, it, it's happened all the time. I've left, uh, discovery or I've left this channel to tested to start my own. And you do, and you, it's like, you can like petapixel people, right? Jordan and Chris, they, in, in our industry did camera store TV. They never actually went out on their own, but they would have been successful if they went out on their own. One of the Try Guys just left. He's on his own now. Um, all those bigger channels, are, they're all starting to split up. Yeah, except for I don't think that the, uh, the Dude Perfect will split up because they're super family oriented and super into religion and stuff. Yeah. You know, so they're good. But anyway, I sat and talked. I'll talk to anybody about business. Like I love sitting, talking business and helping in that gener in that way. So I have another couple of days here. Today's we're recording this on Wednesday. We got all day Thursday, and then I fry ho fry home. I fly home on thir uh, Friday morning. As long as I get to my connection in time in Phoenix, I'll be getting home in the afternoon, and then that will be Condo 2024. Don't know if there will be a Condo 2025 unless they have like an A12 coming or something, and we need to be here. I probably am not coming back out. I'm sure they will continue the tradition of having condo every year. I think they only skipped, what, one year for the pandemic and that was I'm it? assuming the pandemic, they did it online, which yeah. is not a thing. But yeah, I mean, I could totally see 
Uh, they're they're 100 doing it. it's so big. I mean, they do such a great job. Sony puts on some of the best events. They're the best planned. They have, I mean, the, like really good swag. I'll say, like when it comes in terms of swag, Nikon doesn't give you shit. Canon <laughs> gives you a little bit more than shit, but Sony, like they're Sony. They do. see the Sony is the 800 pound gorilla. They are Sony. Yeah, they're ev- they, they they are the electronic giant, and and photography just makes up such a small market for them compared to the rest of their business. How many people would you say they invited for 500? this? Five <sighs> hundred. Oh man, including staff. Five star hotel, Ritz Carlton. Yeah, not all the staff is staying on site though. They have they have a separate um, Best Western. I was told. And I was like, oh, you're staying at the Best Western. I'm like, ah, oh, losers. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a fun trip. They do a great job. Like I said, Sony does a great job. Um, but you know, I that doesn't change me at all. Uh, it's like I'm in such a different place after doing this for 15 years. A trip is not like when you first start out. It's the coolest thing in the world to be on a trip because you get to hang out with people and they treat you well and you see gear. But at this point, it's like, you know, a lot of the topper higher end YouTubers are going to be like, yeah, no, don't need that. Don't want to go, but it's still good to come and talk to some of the people, uh, other photographers that I want to talk to. Very cool. Sounds like you're having a good Um, time. Yeah. Yeah. So totally good time so far. Food is terrible. And, uh, (laughs) that was expected. Yeah, I don't like when it's buffet style food, but it's what they have to do when you have that many people. Yeah, exactly. I'm not complaining, but I'm complaining. I'm not complaining, guys, but I'm complaining. I'm just saying, I'm used to a different style of food. Like, so that's okay. The food is fine. It's just not Jared Bougie anymore. (laughs) My money was uh, on you coming home a day early, but maybe that won't happen for once. No, because it's just one other day. Uh, I brought work um, to do. Like I'm working on the Kickstarter ideas for the photo book for the next photo book. Mm-hmm. Um, I I have the whole paper written out, so it's like pricing. Like how much does the book physically cost me to print? This time I'm going to print more. So I'm looking at two thousand books this time. I would my goal is to sell a thousand during the Kickstarter, hopefully, because it's not a Bernie book. It's a it's a photo book about my music stuff. So hopefully, it, more people will buy. But if I order, uh. I mean, I'm dropping 80, like 80 grand to place this order. So just think it's like a big nut to pop right off the bat. But yeah, no, it's it, there's big expenses because you have to pay a designer. You have to do all the work. Shipping containers, like probably $3,500 to get stuff shipped here on a container ship. Then you got to think about all the boxes I have to buy to, if I sell a thousand books, I need a thousand packages, right? And then I need to use the tape machine thing that I bought. And there's so many expenses that go into doing something that it's not just one expense and you're done. Yeah, I mean you'll you'll be lucky enough to make a little bit of profit and uh, probably barely break even. No, I'm I mean I'm looking forward I I want to just break even with it. And if I make extra money, awesome. Over mm-hmm. time you will make money like I did with the camera bags over time, but it takes a while and it's okay. Like it's a write-off, Steven. <laughs> it's a write-off. So speaking of write-offs, I should probably go down to the event that started 28 minutes ago and see what's going on. Anyway, Videos up and running, I'm assuming, and uh, looks like uh, it. we're gonna we're gonna end we're gonna end it there today, are we, Steven? No, no sense in uh, keeping yeah. going. Yeah, let's wrap it there. I just hope uh, there's not much uh, lag and latency with this uh, with this specific raw talk, just because we are across the country, and it always sounds fine when we're doing it via Zoom. But then usually when I bring in an audition, there's it sounds like we're almost talking over each other. So hopefully. It's not sounding like that to you guys this week. Yeah. I, when I did the clap earlier, I noticed it's like a quarter of a second delay, but it's not as bad as Africa. Africa was almost like a two second delay. I had to pretty much shift the entire track over and then it kept getting worse and worse. So it was a pretty big edit. So hopefully this one's pretty seamless and easy. All right, guys. Um, episode Raw Talk 116. As we continue on our journey forward in life of the podcast, I am going to go decide if I want to keep my yoga pants on all day. And if women can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> yes. Being that I have a better ass than most of them. So you'll just be showing that little tic tac off. Yep. Show the little tic tac off. All right, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Jared Polinfernosphoto.com. See ya. Bye.